Welcome to Contact. We're so glad you you tuned in today. We are um, in a new series, and it's called um, God's Word is True. God's Word is True. Really wide, <laughs> all yeah. inclusive. Yeah. So um, that that might be a shock to you, yeah. but uh, we'll we're going to do our best to try to uh, hone it down. Well, but also to help you to believe and understand really that God's word is true. And today we're going to be talking about um, God is not a man. Right. Wow. But he was a man. But Je he's not Jesus, a man. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus. God became a man. God became a man. In the person of Jesus Christ. But it's really a play on a, a, a it's a part of a scripture yeah, that says God it, is not a man that he should lie. Right. So <laughs> we're talking about God's word being true. And uh, got a lot to share with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you like adventure? Games? Drama, skits, activities, and nights? Well, then you don't want to miss this year's VBS, The Kingdom of God, July 24th to 28th, from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Oh, and I almost forgot, kids only. As bodies of light in this darkened world, we stand out, guiding the lost to restoration. And this October, you can be a part of FLM's most empowering event of the year, Camp Meeting 2023 Body of Light, this October 11th through 15th. Gain insight and wisdom from some of today's most influential speakers, including Nancy Dufresne, Jerry Savelle, Keith Moore, Tim Story, Pastor Randy Gilbert, and Perry Stone. If you feel like your light has faded, this is your time. Get ready to be recharged, healed, and driven towards the plans and purposes God has for you. Together, we are a beacon of hope in a world desperate for answers. Be a witness to the revival. Camp Meeting 2023, Body of Light, October 11th through 15th. For more information, go to our website at faithlandmarks.org. Welcome back. Really glad that you're with us today. We, we have uh, bitten off a very big thing, a, a, a subject from the, from the Word. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about God's Word is true. That's right. Now, there's more than one place in the New Testament where it alludes to the fact that God is not a liar, but man, man is. <laughs> and that's, you know, we're not intending to put people down. That's, that's not the, but it's to tell the truth. That's right. Yeah, God is, is so, so what happens is God is reviled by man as being uh, not, like he's not even relevant in today's world. Well, um, we in, in a past series, we talked about um, if you're able to tame your tongue, mm -hmm. then you're almost a perfect man. Right. Because it, the tongue can no man tame. Right. No man can, but by the power of God living on the inside of us, we have a, a, a chance. <laughs> James of, chapter 3. Of being able to yeah. control our tongues. But, you know, um, truth uh, you know, Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? You right. know, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> right. he was like shocked that uh, right. he the, would bring up something. Because the world that he lived in, there was obviously many truths. Well, yeah. And, and he they didn't had know. many gods and they had many ways of looking at things, which is a lot like the world today. Well, and also truth might be a scarce commodity. Right. I think it's a scarce commodity today. Um, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, a lot of the media and the news feeds and, right. and different things, you know, they uh, give, you could be kind and call it misinformation, you know, but, but honestly, there's a lot of lying going on. Yeah. You know. Which is just uh, intentional misrepresentation. And I think to the point that a lot of people are not aware of the fact that, uh, th you know, that they 
you know, are telling lies. Right. You know, they, they, they talk about things so much, they come to believe them themselves. Right. And so, um, but God is not a man that he should lie. Right. And so that's so, what our subject is today. Right. So I want to read this uh, verse to you, uh, Gospel of John, chapter 17. This is actually part of a prayer that Jesus prayed for all of us uh, the night uh, before he was crucified. So uh, verse 17, we're just pulling out one verse. It says, sanctify them. He, he's asking God to sanctify his people. The church. Yeah. Well, which who would, would be, become would, the church. Would become the church. Yeah, because yeah. they weren't the church yet. Yeah. He sanctify has... them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, just a couple of characteristics about the truth uh, before we go very far. It's not a matter of opinion. Right. And, and it's not a matter of perspective. And the actual truth doesn't have uh, a bunch of options to it. Mm -hmm. A, yeah, it's B, absolute. C. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's absolute. And this is in today's world, people have a really hard time accepting absolutes because they think that it's always, well, they say that, you know, but but we don't say that. Well, I think that's been the problem really in Scripture mm -hmm. down through history mm -hmm. is that God has made statements, requirements set forth commandments, his word, his will. Right. And no, and most of the time the people of Israel didn't believe a word he said because you could tell by what they did. Yeah. They went, they did opposite of what he told them to do. So they yeah. really didn't believe what he said. Right. And so that's really a big problem with people today is they don't believe in people's words. Right. So there's been a big shift uh, away from God in this country, the United States of America, to the point where uh, it's almost like you have to defend uh, telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, because they say the Bible. So, so what is so truth? So the Bible is not relevant. How can you establish the relevance of the Word of God in anyone's life today if it's a matter of opinion right. or discussion or debate? Right. Yeah. You know, and so God settles it all completely uh, by saying that this is the truth. Right. And everything, the world itself, the foundation, the air we breathe, the, the constellations, the planets, everything is upheld, the Bible says, by the word of his power. So if God was proven to be a liar on any part of anything any he level, ever yeah. said, then there would be no foundation to uphold the world as Everything we would know be it like today. that. It would be gone. Okay, so um, you know, and that's the warfare that goes on. It's the, it's the fighting. Of pe you know, people make excuses for why they're not uh, obeying God. And <laughs> well, that was the Old Testament, and this is the New Testament, and God didn't really mean that. And and it, God is hard to understand. Right. And so when when people in today's world look at something like this, mm -hmm. what what they see is minutia. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, and it becomes more and more difficult for people to, per, uh, you know, from all of their various perspectives to agree that, uh, you know, and so it's a matter of agreement. Right. Uh, and we told our they church agree that the word is true that we we challenge them to read the Bible through uh, five chapters a day yeah. out of the word. You it's know? amazing how it changes people just to feed the word into you. Yeah. And then understanding comes. Well, you know, we said God's a covenant keeping God. So yeah. it's just like a contract. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't want to read all the contract. They don't want to read the fine print. They don't want to read all the detail. Right. They don't want to read all the sections and the clauses and all the different appendages and things right. like that. They want to break it up and And uh, just yeah. give me the bottom line. You know, what's the bottom line? But you, you know, you then if you don't know it for yourself, then right. you'll never know if you're being deceived. But right. if you read it for yourself, then you can find out the things that God has specifically promised you, because really with the Holy Spirit in your life, he's, and living on the inside of you, he opens up the word to you to explain and help strengthen you in whatever area you're needing the word to, 
to bolster you up. Right. So you're really missing out if you don't read it for yourself. Right. But it really only takes two months to read the whole Bible all the way through, reading five chapters a day. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Yeah. And it, the Bible says that the Word of God is quick and powerful. It means it's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword that you can find on this planet. The Word is sharper. It divides the soul and the spirit, the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Nothing else can do that. Right. And so uh, then you begin to find out what your <coughs> motivations are and you begin to find out if you're walking on shaky ground, right. if you really get familiar with what God has said. Right. So uh, another maybe current way of looking at this is uh, this is all a story. Mm -hmm. So if you don't read the story in context, you know, you got to read the whole story. And so people, you know, they, they take vacations and they pick a novel that thick <laughs> and, and it's terrible, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they digest that novel as their their read, so For to speak. Vacation, yeah. But you show them something like this. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and you have yours is even thicker than mine. Yeah, I have a big one. But um, let's talk about this one more time. You know, uh, let's explain what John chapter 17 is all about. This is Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And so he's got, the whole thing is a prayer. In fact, verse one, it says, then Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, so this from from verse one all the way to verse 26 is all in red. You know, if you get a red letter edition Bible. That means that every single word is Jesus speaking. And so when he came to verse 17, he said, sanctify them through your truth. Now, let me show you something. In verse 14, he says, I have given them, meaning my followers, the people who have, are listening, my disciples, I have given them your word. And, they, and the world has hated them because, now there's the because. Why, why did they hate them? Because they are not of the world. Right. My disciples are not of the world, so the even word, as yeah. I am not of the world. Right, so the word that he gave them changed them. Right. To the, to the place where uh, they didn't fit in anymore. So sanctify is another word, uh, another definition of sanctify is to separate. Separate. So yeah. God, I'm asking you to separate them through the truth, the truth being the word of God. Amen. So uh, they're hated because they're not of the world. Right. So, you know, that explains a lot today. I mean, you have to, why don't you check your own heart? while we're talking about these things. Is there something on the inside of you that's scratching you, that you're irritated? Like, how can they say such a thing that the Word of God is absolute and it's true? It means exactly what it says. And, and you know, if all the, all, what, what about all the starving people yeah. in, in these different countries? And, and what about floods? And what about earthquakes? Yeah. And what about acts of God that destroy whole towns? You know, all these things go through people's minds. But who said that? Did God say that? I don't think you can find it in the Word of God. Somebody said that about God. But see, if you're a disciple of God, then you get familiar with Him through his word, right. which is truth. And then, My, you, thy and, word and then is you truth. find out that they have taken excerpts of things that he said, and they've taken it out of context and used it. And, and, and actually we know that the enemy, his name is Satan, uh, has manufactured an entire perspective for people. And there's, there's preachers, you know, who preach these things also, because honestly, in the Old Testament, there are some phrases written that God caused these things to happen or God, you know, uh, destroyed or he let uh, the devil get at Job, you know, things like that. And, and it requires someone who uh, does some digging and some rightly studying. Rightly dividing. Rightly dividing the word to understand causative verbs versus 
uh, the other kind. Right. You know, that God didn't cause it to happen. He, he allowed it. Yeah. You know, it was outside of the scope of uh, what, was, what, he, what his involvement would be. Right. But here's something to also take note of. Are you, a, are you a defender of God or are you a blamer of God? You know, it, it kind of puts you on one side of the fence or the other. I'm more willing to believe that God is good, that he, that he wants to bless us, that I can go to him in prayer and that he hears and answers me, that his compassions never fail, his mercies are new every morning. And so, you know, when somebody starts accusing God of being a troublemaker or a problem causer or giving people diseases or causing them to be in car wrecks, then I immediately, it would be like talking about you or somebody, I, I would immediately rise up to defend someone, God's character mm -hmm. because I don't believe that about him. So, you know, you're vulnerable already if you haven't made up your mind yet about right. what you believe about God. Yeah, but notice how just in those a few words that we read uh, in Jesus' prayer, the people that he was ministering to had been changed right. by the word. And, and then uh, he goes on to say, now sanctify them through thy word, which was what he was feeding into the people. And here's another uh, thing that he said, uh, verse eight, for I have given to them the words which you gave me. In other words, Jesus is referring to the Father God. Mm -hmm. I've told them, I don't speak my own words. He said, I've given you the words, that, uh, given them the words you gave me, and they have received them. Yeah. They didn't spit it back out and say, well, but what about this? They received them and have known surely that I came out from you and they have believed that you did send me. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you here Jesus is praying for at that for them and anyone else who would become after them, who would believe on his name. Right. So uh, our little title for today, God is not a man, just a little bit more about that. See, man, uh, and, and this is evidenced in the scripture, man has a tendency to drift in his affinities. And so man is influenced and, and affected by the environment. Satan seasons the environment uh, and, and the voice of man, mm -hmm. and, it, and it infects man. Yeah, they get fickle. <laughs> yeah, and, and God is not like that. You, could, you couldn't change him if, if you wanted to. He's the same yesterday, yesterday to, today, and today, And his and word forever. is forever settled forever in heaven. Forever settled. Amen. Yeah, so be, because he deals with man on a basis of covenants, you know, th this is also somewhat intimidating in today's world that, that the world is actually being run by things that were promised thousands of years ago. Exactly, and that's, that was our point about the throne of David yeah. and what's coming, that Jesus is going to come back again. He's coming back. He's going to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Which was part of the promise. And, and to remember... And God's word is, is just... Th this is what Abraham accepted by faith. Yes. So it's, it's not any kind of an illegal act or something. He didn't live to see it in his day. Right. But he believed it right. and lived like... It was ha going to happen. And God does not usurp the will of man. So even Jesus, as being the king, will sit on the throne, but he will have this way about him uh, where, uh, you know, man will still be uh, who he is with his own free will, uh, et cetera. And, and he won't feel violated. How could you? <laughs> <laughs> So um, those are pretty exciting. So let's talk a little bit more about God is not a man because in, the, in our opening we said, well, but Jesus was a man. He is a man because he's still alive. Right, he became a man. God became a man to identify with mankind and, and it was also a requirement level thing for somebody, uh, a man, to pay the price for man's sin. Yeah, it had to be like for like. Exactly. So it couldn't be an animal sacrifice that would pay the price of a man's right. sin. Right, which the whole Old Testament was based on animal sacrifices. Right. But then God, in order to actually seal the deal, he had to provide a body 
a, a man's body. And it turns out that, that, well, he sent his own son and his son took upon him the form of flesh. Yeah. And was made to be sin for us. So the interesting thing is, is that Jesus was actually born by the word of God. Yeah. The word, God sent his word through the angel Gabriel who spoke his word right. into Mary. And Mary never knew a man. She never knew a man, but she received God's word. word. Now, isn't that what it just said here in John chapter 17? I have given them the word you gave me and they received it. Yeah. So that's what Mary did. She received the word from heaven that Jesus, and the Bible says, and we'll talk about this in another one of our sessions, uh, Jesus is the word made flesh. Right. But the word that God spoke through the angel, Mary received, and that's how Jesus, the word of God was conceived. Mary received that word. Now, the same process happens to every person who hears the gospel the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they hear that he died for their sins, and really he paid the price. He is the sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. And when someone hears that word, they actually hear it, and they receive it. Just like Mary did. Just like Mary did. She received it into her heart. Then your spirit comes alive to God. You're actually become born again. You actually become a new creature in an instant when you receive that living word. Remember we said the word is quick and powerful, sharper alive, than, yeah. sharper than any two-edged sword. When you receive that word, the gospel of the kingdom spoken into, into your ears, you receive it in your heart, you are born again. Yes, yeah, so awesome? Peter said it like this, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So the same word that produced Jesus also produces a believer. Yeah, so, so it's you're born the miracle of him. Yeah. just continues. That's what it, it means to say you're born of him. Mm-hmm. Because the seed, see, is incorruptible, meaning that it, it is not diminished in any way from generation to generation. It cannot be uh, tainted, even though man's seed. See, God is not a man. Well, when you talk about seeds, mm -hmm. the, the, the Word of God is an incorruptible seed. So that's another way of saying that God doesn't lie, right. that He has integrity. And so when the seed the incorruptible seed of God's word is planted in the human heart. It produces the kingdom, the kingdom in that person's life. And they're born in, into And they're the, born into the kingdom. The fruit of the kingdom then begins to become manifested in their life. Right. You know, they, 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 you know, they change. Yeah. They don't tell lies. You know, if they, you know, their I mean, nature has changed. We Boy, all make mistakes. Yeah. And There's a we, whole big New Testament yeah. uh, and, and actually Old Testament also revelation of the new man on the inside. Yeah. So it's, it's just a world of peace. Jesus said, I came to give you peace. I came to give you that your joy might be made full. You know, that's another part of this prayer that your joy would be full in him. Right. And so, you know, the there, storms rage around us. Um, circumstances still happen. Things still go wrong. But in the basis of your being and who you are, you have a foundation of peace and an inner witness of joy because you know that your your spirit is alive to God right and you have yeah someone that you can turn to right so we just want to encourage you in the strongest way if you have not ever read the Bible that you would become a Bible reader and get to know this God who speaks the truth who loves you and wants to live his life through you and be a blessing in your life and those that you love so uh, we've got a few things more to share. We'll be right back. Hold on. Do you like adventure? Games? 
Drama, skits, activities, and nights. Well, then you don't want to miss this year's VBS, The Kingdom of God, July 24th to 28th, from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Oh, and I almost forgot, kids only. Hey, Faith Landmarks, I'm Joe Torres. I don't know if you heard yet, but FLM has their very own Kids Finish Line Summer Camp where you can sign up your kids for one week or multiple weeks, and you can expect them to learn new sports, learn new skills, make new friendships, and most importantly, learn about God. When I drop them off, they're bouncing off the walls. And when I come pick them up in the afternoon and put them in the van, they are knocked out. That's how I know they have fun. I love it. So what are you waiting for? Go to faithlandmarks.org and set up your child right now for Finish Line Summer Camp. Reignite your faith with some of today's most influential speakers at Faith Landmarks Ministries Camp Meeting 2023 Body of Light this October 11th through 15th. Find out more at faithlandmarks.org. Small groups. Small groups? So what are small groups anyway? If you're thinking groups that are small, you're on the right track. Small groups make it easy for you to fellowship and connect with the local church body. If this sounds like something you're interested in, you can simply go to faithlandmarks.org or use the Realm app and search small in the events section. Let's grow together in community as we fellowship in small groups. It's been a privilege to have you with us today. We want to invite you back. So our YouTube channel, our website are both places where you, you can find actually this entire series and all of the other ones that we've done. And we want to encourage you in the Lord that you should take the step of making Jesus the Lord of your life. You're the only one that can do it. And it, we have many different places where we show you how to do that on the, the website. But if you if you really take God's word as your standard and, uh, you know, you begin to think the way he thinks and then that causes you to have a love, you yeah. want to obey yeah. and you put your trust. That's in called him. getting your mind renewed. Right. And so that's all part of <laughs> yeah. this new life in Christ. Oh, that and sounds like brainwash. It <laughs> is. You know, your brain needs to be scrubbed. But settle your faith in Jesus's words. It will change your life. We'll see you back next time on Content.